We open up the book of Genesis with six days of God's activity in creating the world and one day of rest. And because we imitate God as human beings, we too are mandated to work for six days and to rest for one. Sheshet yamim taseh melachtecha, for six days you shall work. Naturally, the rabbis thought a lot about the nature of work as a result. And in Pirkei Avot, we have statements throughout Ethics of the Fathers about the kind of work that is most worthwhile. Of course, work has changed since those days. We've begun to question the nature of work. In her 2021 book, Work Won't Love You Back, How Devotion to Our Jobs Keeps Us Exploited, Exhausted, and Alone, Sarah Jaffe writes that our identities are too tied into our work, so much so that this romantic love with our career trajectories often leaves us feeling unsatisfied and disappointed. Our identities are so tied into work, but post-COVID, we've come to ask ourselves very important questions about the value of office life, about the pain of commuting, the change in in in-person interactions, and collegiality in general. It's no surprise then that the rabbis in Pirkei Ovot wanted to understand what the nature of work was and how to do work well so that we can imitate God. We begin our chapter with a fundamental question asked by Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi Judah the Prince. Ezohi derech yishara shivor lo ha'adam. What is the right path that a person should select? This question of what kind of purpose should we bring to our lives? Because so much of life, so many hours of our day are devoted to work. Rabban Gamliel, the grandson of Hillel, continues in the second Mishnah with his perspective. Yafet Tamud Torah im derech Eretz. As we occupy the world and contribute to it, it's good to balance whatever work we do with study of Torah. The Torah should inform the way in which we think about our days and our hours, that our work should be balanced with learning, study, and acts of piety. As our discussion about the nature of work continues, Rabbi Eliezer Omer in the 19th Mishnah, Have shakud l'mod Torah, be careful and diligent in your learning of Torah. And later he says, Vada lifne mi ata amel, Know who your boss is. Know before whom you toil. I often give advice to students and to my own children that when you think about taking a job, an internship, an assignment, know who your supervisor is. Know who you report to because that's in many ways more important than your job description. Working for the right person can help grow you Working for the wrong person can help shrink you. Rabbi Eliezer says in the ultimate sense, Da lifne mi ata amel. Know who your boss is. That's central to thinking about work and purpose. The Mishnah continues with Kuf, with Mishnah 20 in our chapter, chapter 2. Rabbi Tarfon says, Hayom katsar. The day is short. Vamalacha muruba. The work is great. Hapoalim atzelim, the workers unfortunately are lazy. Vaschar harbe, the reward is immense. Uval habayit dochek, and the master is pressing upon us. Maimonides, in his comment on the Mishnah, says that this is a metaphor for the nature of life and God's governance in it. But beyond the metaphor, in the literal reading of the Mishnah, what we find is a pretty accurate description of every day. Hayom katsar vamalacha ruba. There's so much to do, and the day is too short to do it all. We'll never complete all of our emails. We'll never go to every single meeting. There'll be homework that we simply don't get to. And this feeling can be crushing. It can make us feel insignificant. And that's why. Rebbe Tarfon continues 
in the last Mishnah with a little bit of assurance. Lo alecha hamlecha ligmor. Know that you don't have to finish all of the work because it's impossible to finish all of the work. There'll always be something left to do. There's a book we haven't read or haven't yet written. There'll be an unfinished symphony. There'll be a relationship where we can't tie all of the pieces together. Lo alecha hamlecha ligmor. When it comes to the world of work and contribution, we will never finish. And because that feeling can be so difficult to navigate, Rabbi Tarfon continues and says, don't think that simply because you can't get it done, that it's not worth starting. Lo ata ben chorin libatel mimena. Rashi the 11th century commentator from the south of France says, Lo alecha hamlecha ligmor et kula. All of it. We'll never be able to do all of it. One lifetime wouldn't be enough. Rabbi Tarfon reminds us, before we feel the weight of all that we will not accomplish, that we can't finish it all. And that sometimes our contribution is enough, and we are enough. Music